Good evening, I'm Siwapili Rose Amador, and this is Native Voice TV. Welcome to our show. Today we have with us Wayne Waters. Welcome, Wayne. And Wayne is originally from South Dakota. Yes. Uh, you're from? Where Pine Ridge. Pine Ridge, South Dakota. And I, I know a lot of the Native people out there are aware that there's a lot of needs there for those of you who aren't aware of South Dakota. Tell us the conditions there and tell us how people can help. Uh, people, well, we started out this year with a lot of heavy blizzards and heavy snows, um, something that hasn't happened in a long time, many years. So a lot of the needs is people with clothes, especially kids, um, can always sponsor kids somehow. Families, you know, families need propane. Thank you, Hugo Chavez. He's mm -hmm. the right guy, you know. <laughs> Yeah, he is. <laughs> but we need, you know, it's mainly like, I want to start a scholarship. And probably for some high school kid to learn about solar heating. Mm -hmm. And because a lot of our high school kids, native kids, are smart, but they don't have that money to go to college. So they have to join the military. That is why in the United States Army, the highest minority are Native Americans we can't afford to go to college so they, they right. learn their trades in the military but i'd like to have someone start a scholarship on solar heating or something and for the kids on the reservation well, we know right now the the economic conditions are very bad everywhere yes and people that were middle class lower class have really had a hard time yes what are the conditions there because there isn't a real economy there as far as We're, jobs and yes uh, my reservation what people don't know is I come from the poorest county in the whole United States where unemployment is 90 percent and that's year 90 percent year round year round and but the US census never counts that um, it's very hard there why is that um, basically, is we're stuck in the middle of nowhere. The only work most people do is construction. So that's seasonal from April to November. Um, that's the only and it's thing. not on the reservation. It's uh, most legal of the work elsewhere? you have to leave the reservation right. to find work. Right. And it's the housing situation is terrible when you have six or seven families living in one house. And it gets us mad because when you see all these people donating money to other foreign countries, it's time exactly. we help our own Every people. Time I hear that. It's mm -hmm. time we help our own, you know. And I always have this saying, and I'm going to put it on t-shirts someday, I'm going to put the rent is due. But it's time we help <laughs> our own people, you know. That's it's, true. That's true. It's, it's really sad when I go home and people say, well, why is everyone drunk or not working? You know, we're trying to work. Mm -hmm. We want to do good for our people, but it's it's really hard when you're trying to crawl out of that can and make something okay. of yourself and everyone pulls you down. It's the right, same thing, you right, know? Right. <laughs> now, what is the educational system like? Is there Are the schools on the reservation? Yes. We have high schools. We have grade schools. All the schools are on the reservation. Mm -hmm. We don't go to boarding school anymore. That's, That's been out good. since the 80s. Um, but one of the best schools in the state is the Catholic High School, Red Cloud Indian School. And now we teach Lakota language and That's culture to, in all the schools. So the kids are learning our language, That's learning our excellent. culture in the schools. Good. And which is very good. I really like that because when I see my 10 year old niece mm -hmm. and she's speaking Lakota in the woman's way to me, I think that is really good. That is. But also, um, we do have a university, we do have a college uh, on the reservation oh, called Oglala Lakota College. Okay. It's accredited uh -huh. university. Um, if you see the new Tonka bars, the new health food bars out coming out everywhere, made out of buffalo meat and cranberries, um, that comes from the college and the Lakota really? Fund finances. Yes. Oh, that's uh, good to know. It's a lot of good positive things, and it's really great to see. 60, 70 year old elders who always dreamed of going to college, now they can go to college and get the degree they want to study in. And they just have to drive 10 minutes to the local center and take their classes. That's really good. Oh, 
that's wonderful. And they, they have nursing degrees. Um, it's a lot. Of, it's really positive. Oh, that's good. That's and good. So you don't have to leave home to go to school. You can stay home and take How's, care of business. How are the kids doing in school? What's the dropout rate like there? The dropout rate is pretty high, but it's I it's the gangs and it's the drugs. It's crystal meth is taking over everywhere. It's not just here in California or the East Coast, it's the smallest towns in America, reservations, mm. and it's not being imported from Mexico, it's grown right there in people's right, houses, right. being made there. Um, and it's, a lot of us are working with the kids in the gangs, because we've always had gangs, just like here in the cities. Um, mm -hmm. They're not as tough as they used to be, but uh, we do have a lot of gangs, and we're trying to teach those kids, hey, why are you trying to be like those guys? You know, it's mm -hmm. time to be, be Indian, you know, be That's proud right. of who you are, be proud of where you're from and learn mm -hmm. your culture, learn all you can. Good culture learning. So a few years ago, I took a couple gangbangers from Southern California home and I let them talk at the schools. Mm -hmm. And boy, did they chew some butt. Yeah. <laughs> but it was positive. It's good. And because they seen these guys that were in prison uh -huh. and they were saying, hey, stay away from the gangs, you know. Uh -huh. And that was what I wanted these guys to hear. And I'm eventually going to get a couple more guys to go home eventually in the next year or so to do the same thing. That's good. And Native Pride. You yes. started Native Pride. My it's friend logo. My friend started Native Pride in 1987. Um, I came aboard in the 90s. Um, we got the name patented. You know, we got the copyright on the name Native Pride. We own everything with that name. And we kind of, just kind of been slowly building up our reputation again because we got, you know, we got all the imports coming in with Native Pride and it's, it's not from us. We so how would someone know that it's from you and not from China or someplace else if they want to buy Native Pride, Native Pride product? Native Pride Clothing Company. Oh. We changed the name to Native Pride Clothing Company. We have our own designs. We're not silk screen. Mm -hmm. Everything's embroidered with the best. The good stuff. The good, right. good clothing lines. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we're always shopping for the best t-shirts, the best jackets, anything that will last for years. Good. And I always have a phone number for my partner, Andrew, but if you go to nativeprideclothing.com, I think our website will be up in the next month or so, mm -hmm. the new website. Okay. So if you see any other ones out there right now, they're counterfeits, right? Well, majority of them are counterfeits <laughs> if they don't have our designs and they don't uh -huh. come from the company. Majority okay, so them. get the real thing. Support native people. Yes, yeah, so buy native. Buy native. Yes. Well, I want to thank you for being here. And thank you. <laughs> you know, it's... it's it's, it's, You're doing it's a lot of hear. good work. You're doing good yes. work here, doing good work back in South Dakota. And how could, would, would someone be able to reach you to help out, you know, if they want to adopt a family or if they um, want to help? I will leave you a number. Okay, address. then you contact us at Native Voice TV yeah. at AOL.com and we'll uh, get in touch with you, Wayne. Yes, and I'm always around and I will find somebody. There's always people. We'll I, always, find I have you. a list of kids. So. <laughs> That's great because, you know, there's people that want to help. But we don't want them just, you know, these letters, they come in the mail, I get stacks of them. Yes. And, you know, I, I want to know who uh, I'm working yes. with. I don't want to just, you know, send yes. to these, because you don't know where it's going. So I'd rather, yes. you know, someone that knows a family personally, like you do, and, the, you know, we send the, when we sent the codes and so forth. Yes. I want to make sure it gets uh, to where yes, it's supposed to go. Yes, I will leave you an address and where you can send it here, and then I will find the people with the family. Okay. Because I got tons of kids, and Great. I can't afford them all. <laughs> <laughs> not my we'll kids, try and kids help. Back home. so let us know you know <laughs> well thank you for being here yeah, um we're going to have you on the show next week again okay so we'll learn all about your uh, your family and the horse riding and all the acting that you do because yes. this man has many many talents but we're going to hold him for next week and you'll so tune in next week too and you'll see him again yes thank you for being yes. here thank you thank you and i want to let you know about some of the things that are going on in the community we have Teatro Vision is having a play coming up, and I think we have some, uh, let's see, there it is right there on the screen, from January 22nd until February 8th. It's called The Woman Who Fell From the Sky, and actually it's about a Native woman. These are some uh, pictures from the play. Um, it's a Native woman 
who they threw in jail because nobody could understand her. They thought she was, she fell from the sky because she spoke her own native language. And so they just assumed this lady, you know, just fell out of the clouds. But anyhow, um, Teatro de Vision does a lot of um, different uh, skits, plays on native people. They did one on the, uh, the, the, uh, the native from um, Arizona that was helping people uh, cross the border. So, I mean, he wasn't helping people cross the border. He was putting water out so people wouldn't die. But anyhow, I, if you get a chance, go see the play. It's going to be wonderful. Support Native Theater. Um, and I also want to thank Juan Serna, who's been working with Native Voice TV. Where is Juan? There he is. We cut him on camera. <laughs> thank you, Juan. Juan got a promotion. And so he won't be doing our show anymore. But um, Create TV has wonderful people, and someone else will be moving on to the slot. But thank you very much, Juan, and good luck to you, and congratulations on your promotion. So at this time, I'd like to welcome Elizabeth Gomez. Hello. Welcome, Elizabeth. And you are San Carlos Apache? Yes. And you do a radio station at San Jose City College? Yes, San Jose City College. I've been there for about a year now. And uh, what are you majoring in? Uh, right now I'm just doing general ed, but um, of course I'm doing communications and I'm still tabbing in whether I want to do psychology or sociology. You so can do it all. Two. Yeah, I want to, I eventually want to work with youth, so that's the major that I, I believe. Did you go to school here? There. In San Jose, San yes. San Jose, I was born. Uh, Overfelt High School. Overfelt, okay. Yes. When did you graduate from there? Uh, I graduated in 2005. Uh-huh. Uh, and, and I graduated a little late because um, I was dabbling in other things that but of you course graduated. Supposed to, but that's I did. The important thing. Yeah, it was really uh, nice to walk across the stage. Not. Uh huh. So I, I did that. Took a lot of work because I was behind, and um, so that's a one reason why I want to work in uh, with youth and mm -hmm. go back in inner cities and let like, kids know that even though you're on the wrong path, there is always the right one. So you can always make it. Mm -hmm. So now you're going to San Jose City College. Yes. And t what are you doing with communications? Uh, what, well, I, I actually haven't got to be able to get there yet because I'm still doing general ed. Uh -huh. So, but just doing the radio thing and, and what radio it. thing? Well, I I have my own show and um, it's not currently on right now because we're in intercession. Uh huh. And but when other than that, I am on. I do. I was the president of my radio station this semester. Oh, what's so, it called? So uh, KJCC. Uh huh. And, so, and what, where is it on the dial? How can we find it? Uh, one hundred four point one. Actually, uh -huh. our status is not that great, but you can catch us online uh -huh. on live three sixty five dot com. So we broadcast. What is that again? Uh, live three sixty five dot com. Live sixty three. 365. Okay, so we'll tune in. And what's the show about? Um, my show, uh, mostly positive influences, and I just, I do weather and news report. Really? Yeah, live. Is it like report. a talk show? Or yeah, I music do, or and I have music, so I do a lot of the music. I like to press play. I always say that, so, and that's how I kind of fell into it. A lot of people are like, you talk way too much, and you play Radio Commando when you're in the car, so I think that'd be a really good career for you. <laughs> 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 so that's what I, I fell into and I went to San Jose City I didn't know that they had a radio station I didn't either. but yeah so I just went just for my education and to get on the right foot and mm -hmm. they I got lucky and um, they accepted me getting my own show Wow you know how intrigued? often are you on twice a week for uh, wow that's good three hours every day for those two days out of the Really? Week. Three mm -hmm. hours? Wow. Mm -hmm. So during the three hours, what do you do? Do you interview people? Do yes, I do. I interview local artists, uh, students on campus. I've had mm -hmm. the privilege of interviewing my president of my school on the fly. That was really random. He was doing the Kinder Carmenata on campus, that's what it's called, and they have hundreds of kindergartners that come on campus oh, wow. and visit <laughs> our campus and, you know, the cosmetology students and all the different students on campus and all the different groups um, uh -huh. come and entertain them and teach them about college. And, and I seen him outside my radio station. I grabbed somebody in the <laughs> lobby and I was like, see that guy right there? They're like, yeah, can you go grab him for me, please? He's your president of your school. <laughs> and then they were like, okay. So they grabbed him and came in and I got to interview him and that kind of actually helped us out um, immensely. I didn't realize that, but mm -hmm. it did. So 
it's keeping us around because with the budget cuts, it's so hard. It's hard, huh? Yeah, they're getting, like, trying to cut our newspaper and, and you know, other activities that students are really hard involved in and mm. fortunate to keep our radio station around that I'm involved with, so. Right, right. So when does it start again? Uh, we start break? January 27th. So 27th. that's when it ends. We get to go back. Are you going to be covering the inauguration or anything or talking about that? Um, eventually, yeah, of course, we always try to keep everybody updated on the news and we followed the, you know, the campaigning mm -hmm. and, and the elections and stuff like that. So How did you follow the campaign? Did you talk to people who worked on the campaign? Uh, yeah, we brought students in. We got, we had, um, actually we have a talk show host because our, our radio personalities are so diverse uh -huh. there and um, he, he has a pure talk show and he brought in, uh, he, we were able to get in contact with people that were on Obama's. Uh, campaign campaigning they have like an office they had two offices here in San Jose uh -huh. and so we were able to get um, young people here to come in and and talk to us and and kind of not um, not even just go for Obama just kind of be neutral and I was fortunate to be on some of the, um, the like helping people get involved with just you know voting in general not uh -huh. even if you don't want to vote for the president just, just vote for the issues yeah just props and so that was it was really nice I mean it's one of the first elections I was really involved with I mean was cause, it yeah because I was I know I didn't vote but I mean <laughs> it's horrible I was just but I was so busy and and I, but I really wanted to get educated on it because you know as a young person and growing up out here I I mostly was led in the wrong direction I have a lot of examples of what not to do mm -hmm. I guess and and it was really neat to but you could to be a role involved. model now yes I hope so. For the younger kids, for your family. Yeah, I have I have younger brothers and sisters mm -hmm. that um, are definitely on the wrong path, uh, but I, they're getting there. They're getting. They're learning. You mm -hmm. have to learn. You know, everybody has to in experience for themselves. So, and I definitely did. Well, if they see you going to school, mm -hmm. maybe they want to do that too. Yeah, people Just are like, you never answer your phone. I'm like, cause I'm at work. I'm at school. I'm busy, and uh -huh. you know, things like that. Try to keep uh, pro be productive. Definitely. So, so you play music, you interview people, mm -hmm. and you, so you do you design the show or you plan the show, produce yeah, the show. Yeah, yeah, I'm basically the the producer behind it, and I I go and I kind of wing it too, though, because mm -hmm. it's when I work best, I think. So, and I'll bring in guests from off campus when there uh, if there's people if there's events going on, mm -hmm. like we host debates, we host and like we have like cultural events. You host events. debates actually on the radio. No, no, no. There's debates on, on campus, campus, and then, and then, then I'll just them. yeah, and then we'll promote them. Oh, okay. So uh -huh. Our campus promotes it. I've gotten involved with campus more because ASB, which is uh, Associated Students on Campus, is our like our government mm -hmm. that help out student body and. Um, I've actually, being the president, I had to be the AS rep, but that opened more doors for me because... Are you uh, the president of... The, our radio club there oh, on so campus. It's, it's a whole club. Yeah, it's a whole club and a class. It's a journalism class. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. So then you take those units, and we get, we get um, college credit for it, and then we can get involved with the radio and learn the equipment. Now, somebody wants to go to San Jose City College, and I think we did have a young lady on here, a native lady, that was recruiting okay. uh, for uh, San Jose City College mm -hmm. and Evergreen, uh, but I think it was a district. So if somebody goes to school, they can join the radio club, or mm -hmm. how do they get involved They can definitely, they can uh, go on campus, and it's actually, there's a course, and it's called Journalism 98. Mm -hmm. You can sign up for that course, or you could even just join the radio club you don't mm -hmm. even have to take the units or the class. You can just just be in the club. And How many people are in the club? Um, this semester, we were fortunate to have, I believe, 21 students. Oh, quite a few. Yeah, and when I first started, there was there was like eight or seven, and then it progressed to about 11 the next semester, and then we just started recruiting. We had like got more booths and promote and mm -hmm. try to get out there. So. Well, that's good. We got Do you have a lot of students that listen in? Yeah, it was pretty cool because we started doing play-by-play -play with uh, our football team. Oh, yeah. And we had, <laughs> we had like um, 37 listeners online, so at once. And it, uh -huh. it does like, it'll alternate how many people are coming in and out. But uh -huh. at once, that was pretty cool. And oh, then we yeah. broadcast internationally, too. You do? Mm -hmm. I have a cousin in Germany. She, her husband's stationed there. Uh -huh. And she's like, tell me what, you know, when you're online. I mean, we have to get the time frames right, but. Uh-huh, because of the time difference, yeah. of course. So, but that's, 
I thought it was pretty neat. Yeah, and like, yes. I'll be in the radio station, I'll be just playing music and kind of off air, and then I'll get a text message, oh my gosh, you're, I can hear you. <laughs> and it's kind of overwhelming. I'm like, wow, you really can? They're like, yes. But it's so when really you give the neat. news, what kind of news do you give? Do you new, give campus news or I give camp general? I give campus news, and I also give world news, uh, things that are going on in the Bay Area and locally, and, you know, like stuff going out and give, you know, positive feedback if it's like a tragedy or anything uh -huh. like that. So I try well, to do that. Being a journalism class, do you get credit for doing the radio station? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, we, if you want to be in the radio club, you can do radio station. But when you're in the journalism class, you, you can do radio too. So I don't know if you could get, it's just only three units. But the general, journalism class, do you actually write the material for the radio station or is that separate? Uh, if you want to go aboard and do that, take mm -hmm. that time, then yes, they'll do it. You, you can do that. And we also, um, he, our teacher is the announcer for the Sharks. Really? Yeah, John Schrader. So, and he, he's been in broadcasting for a long time. So he, we get kind of like oh, how a exciting. professional insight. Yeah. And he just helps us, you know, practice and we read and, and how to, keep going and not have dead air and you know just what to expect in the world when we do get out there and in this industry it's mm -hmm. kind of crazy so as an announcer he was all the the excitement yeah and he's the, excited yeah <laughs> yeah because yeah, i've heard him of course all the you know mm -hmm. with the sharks so yeah it's yeah. pretty cool i'm a more laid-back personality so you relax everybody i'm like relaxed <laughs> and i'm kind of goofy and just talk randomly and yeah it's fun it's a good I mean, I, I, I really just enjoy, like I said, pushing play and just going with it uh -huh. and talking to my audience. And How long does it take you to plan for a show? I really don't plan. You just show up. And yeah, I really do. Up. I'm like, okay, here I am. And then I muffle through my bag and I'm like, <laughs> good morning. And I it, it just start, you know, just talking. Talk about the, your day. Yeah, talk <laughs> about my day, how I got there, the weather outside coming in and what's going on on campus and what to look forward to things like that. Okay, so what are you going to do with, okay, you're going into sociology or yeah, I, counseling? I'm, yeah, I want to be like a, I want to be a youth counselor. Mm -hmm. I want to work with youth. Well, oh, because, you know, I was kind of, uh, I was adopted when I was six, but mm -hmm. by my aunt, by my tia, by my uh, biological father's older sister. Mm -hmm. And so I've got to meet a lot of younger kids that have had like a worse struggle than I think I've had. Mm -hmm. And I think it's interesting to come from the neighborhoods that we've come from and just progress and see everything in a more positive light as to following all the negativity. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what I, I want to do. I want to oh, definitely wonderful. at the end of my life, I just want to have that goal set. Right. So from um, San Jose City, you're going where? San Jose State or have you I was, uh, about I've been looking about different, a lot of different colleges. Uh, I was thinking about Fresno State uh -huh. and uh, I looked into Santa, Santa Cruz State. I mean, Santa, Santa uh, UC Santa Cruz mm -hmm. and um, and actually San Francisco too, because they have a lot of radio stations out there. Oh, so you're Everything gonna stay is, in, the, in the radio business, I mean, as far as a side thing? Yeah, as far as a side thing, just to, um, you know, I, to talk to youth, I wanna have like my career and, and then just be able to look, this is what I'm doing. I'm not only being able to come back and give to my community, I wanna mm -hmm. show you, you can have what you want in your life. Do what you, you, you love. Mm -hmm. Don't give it up for somebody else. It's just going to take you and rob you for what you really can be. Well, that's right. You know, if you can bring some people into the radio sh station with you and let them learn what you're doing, they might yeah. say, wow, this is pretty fun being on campus. I think I want to go to school. Yeah. You know, I want to go to college and do something else with my life. Yeah, I took my little sister there because I hadn't seen her in, like, so long. Um, they were living in Arizona with my, my biological mother. Uh -huh. And then they came out here, and I had them for, like, a week, a week or so. And I took her to my school just so I could sign up. She was walking around and she ended up, I ended up talking to my real mom. She was just like, your sister said she wants to go to your school. I think that's so neat because if I could do it over, I think I would have started at like a state or a UC. Uh -huh. And she just thinks that my community college is so neat. And I, th I think that's neat too, because I just want to give that message too. Whatever college you decide to go to is, is college. Well, school. That's great. You know, if you can take a lot of your family members over to the campus so they could see what going to college is like. And I think, you know, they have a lot of tours now for the um, high school students, but we need more kids exposed to colleges. Yeah, definitely. Because that really gets, you know, the kids enthused. Well, maybe yeah. I want to do this. And 
So I know every time we had a speaker at our school in high school, I wanted to do that. If they were talking about being a CPA. I want to do that. Because yeah. it really motivated you, you know, to want to do those things. That's true. You know, so you just need to keep um, inspiring them to to come see what you're doing and you Yeah, know, and I feel like them. if I if I go back to a neighborhood that the neighborhood that I came from, talk to the same school that I went to and show them that I've been on the same path that you have and uh -huh. you know, made some of the mistakes that you've made, that there is still more out there. You know, because I think growing up, I was like, eh, you don't even know. You don't even know. You don't have to go home sometimes and your lights are off or mm -hmm. you don't have running water that day or, you know, things like that. So you don't have to feel that, but I do. You know what I mean? So you don't know what I'm going through. So please mm -hmm. don't tell me that this is the right path because you've already been on that your whole life. But I think that if I can go back to the youth and tell them. Like, Especially like Overfelt, you know. Okay, yes. I went to Overfelt. I came, went to this school. I did this. I, you know. Because mm -hmm. a lot of times, you know, you don't want to hear it from your parents. You don't want to hear it from <laughs> an older person. Don't. But if you could hear it from your peers or cousin or, you know. Yeah. It makes a big difference. Definitely. And I, these days, a lot of kids like to hear what their peers have to say, what they're doing, and so mm -hmm. I think I could do that. And a lot of times, if they're not doing the right thing, that's what they're following. So, you know, we yeah. want to really make sure that we get them on the right path. Yeah, that's true. I want to uh, give them something productive to do. Because I know as a youth, I occupied my time with other negative things that were in the way because the, product the productivity wasn't there for me, so... So, yeah, we have less than a minute, so tell what, what message do you want to give to our youth? Do what you love and love what you do. That's a good Definitely. message. Definitely. Yeah. Thank well, you for having me. Well, I want to thank you for being here, and we'll see you on the, uh, probably on the big screen. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll definitely have you help us out with Native Voice because you're okay. really good at uh, what you do. <laughs> thank you very much. So good much. luck to you, and um, you'll make it. You'll make it. Thank you. And thank you for joining us. Uh, we'll see you again next Sunday at 6 o'clock here at Native Voice TV. We want to thank our sponsor, El Observador, and Center for Training and Careers. So, and thank you again, Kualiotli. May you have a good journey. Good night.